With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details. You've discovered your link to GoPowerCat.com's PowerCat podcast. Now, here's your host, GoPowerCat.com publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to the PowerCat postgame podcast. Tim Fitzgerald and Brian Hanley as we recap Kansas State's difficult 20-18 to loss to Oklahoma State today in Manhattan. And uh, it was a game K-State could have won. They just couldn't make enough plays, and they made enough errors to kind of bail out Oklahoma State. We are sponsored by Caddyshack Golf Wear. Caddy with two T's. Visit CaddyshackGolf.com for all of your officially licensed golfing willy apparel, accessories, and more. Use code GPC for free shipping on your next order. Brian, I welcome to the show, by the way. I don't know how to I don't know how to handle this game. K-State played a lot better than I thought it would. Uh, it was aided by the fact that Oklahoma State came in pretty banged up and didn't play Tylen Wallace and Chuba Hubbard uh, wasn't at 100%. Um, but I still thought the K-State defense was fantastic. I There's some questions I have about the offense, but that's just the way it's going to be this season when you got a, a true freshman quarterback. I guess I'll just throw it open to this. Give me your immediate thoughts after this game. Well... I was I was frustrated. Uh, I thought the defense played uh, about as well as it could play. It got tired in the third quarter uh, because they were out there the whole time. Uh, but I thought the defense played as well as it could possibly play, regardless of whether they had guys banged up or not. Hey, that's football. And we we didn't give ourselves an opportunity. I know we have a freshman quarterback, and it's going to be that way, but – if you're not going to give yourself opportunity to win and go make plays, you're not going to be able to make them. And we didn't, yeah. I mean, and I guess at the end, I mean, that shows, Hey, he's got, you know, he overthrows the ball, trying to force the ball down the field uh, when he didn't have to, and you're going to have to live with that, but you got to give yourself opportunities to win. You can't just continue to run the ball on first and second down against a defense like that and expect to come away with stuff. I mean, it's just not going to happen. It's literally just not going to happen, and it didn't. So it was was very frustrating. It's easy to hang this on the freshman quarterback. He had some crucial turnovers, some big mistakes, but he also kept him in the game because him running the ball was literally the only thing that was working for Kansas State on a consistent basis. This offense doesn't have enough weapons, does it? Period. Nope, doesn't. Um, I, I will say this. You know, Malik Knowles, we, and we've been bashing him. I heard, I'll just say myself, I've been bashing them and the wide receivers a lot this year. They threw the ball to him once. They, I don't believe they even looked his way the rest of the game. So you got to give guys opportunities. You, you're just going to have to give them opportunities. I think they threw it to him one other time than it was pass interference or it could have been pass interference and they didn't call it. I know that's what it was. And they didn't call it in the end zone, but it's like you got to give guys opportunities. We just didn't give ourselves enough opportunities. I don't put this on the quarterback at all. I, I mean, I know he he fumbled and, and I, I understand all that, but that, this game wasn't his fault. This game was not his fault. Yeah, I think Malik left the game at some point with an injury. Coach Kleiman wasn't even sure about that as the game went on. Or in post-game press conference, he said he wasn't even – fully aware that Malik was injured until later on. So uh, I'm not sure what happened. I know Sammy Wheeler left uh, after his big catch. Uh, On top of not having enough weapons, the weapons that they do have are getting injured, and it's just kind of mounting. It's going to be a good week for an off week for Kansas State. They need to get healthy, maybe uh, get feedback under them. Uh, How do you think uh, Will Howard will handle this? Because uh, those were some glaring errors. I mean, the fumble that ended yeah. up being returned was really unfortunate, but brother, you can't, you can't put the ball in danger there. He, he was a little loose no. with it going through the middle of the line and K state paid the price. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's got to understand that. First of all, I mean, we can talk about it all we want ball security, but just having the ball in their proper hand as you're running 
it's elementary. And I know a lot of guys don't do it. Even at the next level, guys don't do it. But if you're running to the left side, put the ball in your left hand. I mean, they teach you that literally when you're in flag football. Just do it. I know it's not your strong hand. I get that part. But do you see what happens when you don't do that and you get a little loose? You know, and the guy just literally didn't even look like they were going for the ball. They were just looking to tackle him and it just scraped the ball, flopped out, and touched down the other way. And he just, you know, and the, the pick six, and he just, he, I mean, I know he's trying to make a play, but there was plenty of time. Yeah. And not to mention the guy was not open. I mean, it was not even close to being open. So he's got to he's got to start to get better. You know, got to start to make better reads, better throws. Hopefully he will understand it and take the bye week in stride and just sit back and just say, you know what, I made some errors. It's time for me to get better. Yeah, because even with these back-to-back losses, Kansas State isn't out of the running for a spot in the nope. Big 12 championship. It's rather remarkable. Uh, I'm watching Iowa State grope around right now with Baylor, so um, that'll be very interesting in a couple weeks. Uh but the defense, Brian, they played so well. I mean, to put this into context, yeah. as a total uh, in total yardage, K State had three seventy to I, uh, to Oklahoma State's two fifty six. And keep in mind, Will Howard had one hundred and twenty five yards rushing, so he had about fifty percent of Oklahoma State's entire offensive output just running the ball. Uh, man, you hold Oklahoma State to thirteen points on defense. And of course, they gave up that long fumble recovery. Uh, that that's a winning total, man. You, you got to reward the defense. That's maybe what I'm most frustrated about is that such an incredible defensive effort was squandered in defeat. Yeah, that's what I'm. I mean, the defense, like I said, the defense literally played lights out football today just tons of pressure stopped the run for the most part i mean they got a little loose in the third period the third quarter when they were out there the whole time i mean but other than that it was the defense just played lights out couldn't couldn't have asked for a whole lot better than what they gave you and then to come up short this way it was just you feel bad for those guys but you know we just gotta get better just keep going just keep fighting keep getting better um and, you know, two weeks, another big challenge, um, and just come out guns blazing again. Yep. Kansas State drops to 4-3 and three with this loss, 20-18 to Oklahoma State on Saturday. They are now 4-2 uh, and two in the Big 12. Still on track for a really good season as they take an off week leading into Iowa State uh, up in Ames, and they play Baylor, and then they close it home with Texas. Uh, you know, it's it's been interesting how this season's been divided into three parts. And this middle part uh, started with a big win over Kansas and has since gone off the tracks. When you're playing a freshman quarterback, um, I know he's going to make mistakes. You you just – it's part of the growth process. I, and the fumble sticks out. The biggest mistake he made was getting greedy at the end of the game, as you said, forcing yeah. the ball – to a tight end that hasn't had a catch in Connor Fox all season. I don't know why he picked that place on the field to put the ball, but that now is kind of his issue. He He's trying yep. to force the ball into spots. We saw it at West Virginia. Now he did it at the end of this game. I'm hoping that's something he can absorb with an off week and kind of get over that, maybe go through some more progressions because, man, he, he – it's almost like he thinks he can throw the ball and it's just going to happen because that's what happened in high school. Man, this is a different level. He's going to have to learn from it and learn from it quickly because he is in a very difficult position being called upon. Uh, and I hope fans can try to stay fair to him, even though uh, he's made some mistakes the last two weeks. Well, I mean, it, it, being fair and being honest are too, I mean, you know, we just got to be fair with him, but we also have to be honest. And they're two, they can be two different things because being fair to him, you know, he's going to make some mistakes, but being honest, he can't make those mistakes. You know, he's got to be able to read. Now, granted, reading defenses in high school, you're, you're not even doing that. I mean, that's not even something that they're teaching you at that level. And you got to be, you know, be, be able to do that at this level. The one thing that I'll say, you know, Brando and, and Spencer Tillman, that we, I mean, I've had their issues with them, but they were kind of spot on with this one. They said, you know, a single high safety, 
you know, and they're a man, you can't just make that throw. You can make it just what you said. You can make it in high school. You cannot make that throw in college. They were all over it. And you, just like you were, you're right. You can't make those kinds of throws and then forcing it to guys that haven't ever made a play before. I mean, you gotta, I mean, I know you want to trust everybody, but at some point you just got to make the right play. You know, and even as a freshman, you got to make the right play. It can't, everything just, we can't fall back into the, well, he's a freshman, he's a freshman, he's a freshman. If we want to have a good season, continue to have a good season, then the freshman, we, he's got to get this freshman thing out of him and start playing a little better, making a little bit better decisions. But it's not all on him. That's another thing. It's not all on him. The offensive line has to be better. We got to be able to run the football. You know, we got to be able to do those things. And I don't mean just with him because he obviously ran the football well, but other things as well. We got to be able to do those things. It can't just be okay, he's got to drop back 30 times and win a football game for us. Well, we're not going to win any football games if we're going to do that. So just has to be better all around. Be better for him. Yep, I agree with all of that. Tylen Wallace, a great receiver for Oklahoma State, was out today. Um, I feel like uh, K-State really caught a break because Tylen Wallace changes the entire com- complexion of that game because he's really their – their main receiver. I mean, they had some other guys step up, but none of them scares you like Tylen Wallace. How big of a break was that for Kansas State that he was out? Oh, it's huge. It was huge. It's huge. I mean, you can drop another another safety down, and you, I mean, because you got to put two people on him. You got to. I mean, you just have to do that. You know, and didn't not not having to do that today is huge. You know, being able to put an extra guy down to stop the run game. Uh, like I said. This guy is an NFL wide receiver. You know, he's been doing all this at the college level this year. He could be doing it in the pros. He just chose to come back. I mean, the guy is that good. He's going to be an NFL guy. And we we caught a break, you know, and it was, you know, it it was an opportunity missed. I'll just say that it was an opportunity missed. That third quarter for K-State offensively was an utter, utter mess. Um, Yeah. How much of this do you put on Courtney Messingham, the offensive coordinator and play caller, and how much of it is um, you just don't have enough tools to do much with? I mean, it's a little bit of both, but it was play calling for me. Give the guys an opportunity. They didn't give them an opportunity. It's one thing if they can't do it. It's another thing if you don't even give them the opportunity. You can't continuously run the ball first and second down. You just can't line up with and just run the ball on first and second down and just think that you're going to be able to move guys when you haven't been able to move them all game. It's just not going to happen. And that's all we did. And we, I mean, and we didn't do anything. It was just, it was bad. It was bad. But again, the tools, you got to have the tools out there to be able to get stuff done as well. So you can't put it all on play calling, but you can put the majority of it on it. And I do. I do. You got to put guys and kids in position to be able to make plays and at least give them the opportunity. And we didn't give them an opportunity. Even if you don't have them, if you don't have the guys, okay, that's fine. But maybe we do. Give them an opportunity. See what happens. They kept going back to the wheel route. And Oklahoma State had scouted it, covered it, and they kept going back to it. Brian, I, I'm not sure what happened to screen passes or bubble screens to receivers or anything else that might be a little bit different. But – when it's when they've got it figured out, just stop trying, man. Just stop. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it seemed like crossing routes were working. We ran like two of those in the whole game that we at least attempted to throw. I'm like, we're just throwing the win. Not only were the guys not open, I mean, they weren't even close to being open on the wheel routes. I'm like, what are we doing? And then, but part of that is quarterback. Right. Part of that is okay. If that's the route that's called, and I know it's not open. I got to throw the ball somewhere else. And he didn't even attempt to come off of that route and look anywhere else. And maybe that's them teaching him, hey, just throw this. And if it's not open, throw it out of bounds. Um, Because that's what it looked like. But, we, I mean, at some point, you're exactly right. Just stop. And we, I don't know how many times we did. I'm like, oh, my goodness, what are we doing? It's not open. They're not going to let us have this. They're not going to let us have it. So go somewhere else. And we did not do that. How good was Wyatt Hubert today? He was he was just all cool. over them. I mean, just dominated. Just literally dominated the football game. Just couldn't be blocked, refused to be blocked, pass, run, whatever it was, just refused to be blocked. 
Uh, I thought Oklahoma State, and I still think Oklahoma State has a really good offensive line, and he just said, you know what, I, I refuse to be blocked by any of you guys. You're not good enough. I'm better than you, and there's nothing that you can do about it. Absolutely nothing you can do about it. Loved watching him play today. It was an outstanding effort out, uh, by everybody, but he stood out. Yeah. He stood out, and, and it wasn't even close. You mentioned that third quarter when the offense stranded the defense on the field and they got tired. Yeah, on that touchdown drive that Oklahoma State mounted, you had Ross Elder just absolutely whiff on a tackle. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, you can't duck your head and try to put a, your shoulder into a Big 12 running back. It's just you, no. can't, you can't do that as a free safety. You got to get up there and wrap them up and and hope your help comes in there. Uh, and then AJ Parker, who's been so good, just couldn't make the play on the touchdown run. He was in the right, right. spot, just couldn't quite finish it, and I think he was just tired. I, I'm just I'm the mastery of the defense today just jumps off the page to me and. Uh, I I can't wrap my mind around how this this offense ended up, frankly, not scoring enough points, not getting it done. But let's let's talk about this now. Two point conversion attempt in the first half. Uh, I say you never do it. You you just never. don't chase the points before halftime. And never, Brian. They kicked two extra points. The game is tied, man. Just kick. Just take the free points. I don't even know. That you, I mean, I've never even heard of anybody going for two when you're up 12 to nothing in the first half. Never, never, ever, 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 regardless of in the first half or not. If you're up 12 to nothing, you don't kick or go for two to try. I'm just like, what are we doing? It just did not make any sense. I mean, we had all, I mean, we had the momentum and we were about to get the ball back in the second half. I was like, just take the momentum kick the extra point and let's move on. And literally that came back to bite us. Yep. It sure did. It sure did. Oh. As Chris Kleiman said, they had the right play. The play worked. They just didn't execute it right. And, but I would argue that you threw a pass and it appeared to be coming right out of the sun for the receiver yep. to turn around. And I don't, I'm not sure Philip Brooks really ever clearly saw he the did. ball. There's no way, no way. Cause he didn't even get his hands up to him. There's yeah. no way he saw that. Very, very frustrating. Kansas State falls. They get the week off. Um, and uh, there's a lot of stuff to work on. But, Brian, it comes back around to this for me. You can talk about Will Howard. You can talk about the lack of weapons. But this offensive line has got to be better, man. There's no gotta running lanes there. They're trying no. to run Deuce up the middle. He was rarely successful at that because there's just nothing there for him to get through. There's not a tiny hole for him to work his way through. As good as the offensive line was outside of the Arkansas State game through the KU game, as good as they were, they've been just just awful the last two games. Just awful. And if it's going to continue – it's going to be trouble. They have got to get back to, and again, it's going to be part play calling too, because and let's just call it what it is. We're not talented enough to just go line up and push people around yet. That's not where we are right now. So we got to do things and throw guys off. Again, I've said it a million times, run or throw on first down, run on passing downs, mix it up. Do some di things different. Maybe run a trick play here or there. Just keep teams off balance. That's the things that we have to do. And we haven't done that the last two days. We've been super predictable and super conservative. We're not going to win games like that. We've got to be better. The coaching staff has to be better. I'm not trying to pile on them and bash them, but I am going to tell it like it is. They've got to be better in putting the guys in positions to make plays for themselves when we're not as talented to just line up and move people and we're just not so we have to do things and we did a great job of that earlier in the season of just lining up and and doing things differently you know tricking people keeping them off guard keeping them off balance getting off schedule doing things off schedule we got to be do a better job of that because the line they got to be better they just have to be better Absolutely, they do. This is the Powercat Post Game Podcast, sponsored by Caddy Shack Golf. We're going to take a little break here. Get to the questions from Wabash Station because they're piling up. People have a lot of questions following this game. And we'll be back on the other side of this short break. The Powercat Podcast will be right back.
Is your January looking dry? Get some lotion, get a humidifier, and better yet, get Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. With Drizzly, you can compare prices across local stores to get the best price on a huge selection of drinks perfect for dry January. Every single time. Non-alcoholic wines? Have a look. Ready-made mocktails? Grab a straw and order them up. Beer without the alcohol? (laughs) Yep, take your pick. You can find all of them here, in the app, in that phone that's in your hand. Could it be any simpler? Nope, not a chance. So shop for great deals on all your dry January beverages or other drinks and get them delivered to your door or blanket fort, maybe. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. And don't forget to lotion up your elbows. They're looking a little dry. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. How to get 30, 30, how to get 30, how to get 20, 20, 20, how to get 20, 20, how to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month? So, Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows full terms at mintmobile.com. We now send it back to the PowerCat podcast. Uh, you always are trying to get to that 14 points rather than chasing it later on. And uh, let's be honest, we had a great play called and we just didn't execute it. It was it was open and we just didn't execute it or it is 14 to nothing. Welcome back to the PowerCat postgame podcast. That was Kansas State football coach Chris Kleiman explaining his thinking about why they went for two in the first half. A two-point conversion that failed and left K-State chasing the points the rest of the game. Kansas State falls to Oklahoma State 20 to 18 today in Manhattan. It kind of turned into a defensive struggle. It turned into a game where both offenses couldn't make enough plays, and it really came down to Oklahoma State's defense with a fumble recovery that went all the way back. That was the difference in the game, and also maybe a misguided attempt to go for two in the first half by Kansas State and opened up the door to being behind in the second half instead of just having to kick an extra point to get it tied at 20-20. Hindsight is 20-20, ironically there. Uh, Ryan, I mean, it's easy to second-guess that, but... um, I, I, I still I I said this in the first half of the show. I just I, I would never go for two in the first half of a game. I just it, nope. I just can't. I don't know. It, it, it's there's, very frustrating well, to me. There's no reason to be good chasing points that early. Right. You don't need to be chasing points, especially when you got the momentum. It's about to be halftime. Just kick the extra point and get into the locker room. You know, there's no reason. And it doesn't matter that you had the right play. And they did have the right play. It just didn't get executed. You know what? The right play was kicking the extra point. Let's talk about that. Yep. That was the, actually the right play. So we just, I don't, I don't know, just flabbergasted that that was even in the realm of thinking. Unless they thought, hey, we're going to need every single point because they're going to score a bunch of points and we got to have every point. Turns out you didn't. Yep. So... As I mentioned, we're sponsored by Caddy Shack Golf from the golf course to the tailgate. Show your purple pride all week long. Caddy Shack Golf. A caddy with two T's. Visit CaddyShackGolf.com and use the code GPC for free shipping on your next order. Let's get to some questions here. And I want to start uh, with some positive. Yo Mama. Um, not literally your, your mama. Uh, it's just a guy. It's, it's a screen name. Uh, he, he actually wants to know this. Did you see improvement with Will Howard today? Uh, no, nah, not really. I, I don't think he played horrid as, as bad as what maybe we might think with a couple of turnovers, but I didn't see a whole lot of improvement. I, I'll be honest. I, I mean, ball placement was, wasn't there. Um, you know, we're throwing the balls to other or to open receivers. I didn't see a whole lot. Now, again, he may not have been put in a position to be able to do that. You know, he may have been taught, Hey, this is the read you have, throw it here, no matter what, or throw it away or tuck it and run. But I didn't see a whole lot of improvement from him today. He did have the drive immediately after the fumble six um, yes. play. He did put together a drive, and I thought that said something about him. I thought that was nice. 
I mean, it was nice. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he played horrid. I thought it was a good, you know, a good comeback after the turnover. I'm just saying I didn't see a whole lot of improvement from one week to the next. I, I think he's a good football player. And maybe my expectations are a little skewed because my expectations might be a little higher. But I think he's a good football player. I think he's played he played fine. I don't think he played bad. I just think that the improvement that we want to see and we need to see, that wasn't there today. How good was Jack Stanine coming in there and making some plays, kind of basically filling the Briley Moore role in some ways. But uh that kid, he's he looks like a bowling ball out there, but he makes some plays, doesn't he? He does. He does. I mean, he looked I thought he looked great. Um, he had the one drop, but I, I mean, you're going to drop some. You can't, I mean, how many catches did he have? I mean, the guy was everywhere. I thought he played extremely well. And for what we need and what we want to do, we got to do more of that. Got to do more of that. You know, even if it's, and sometimes it was for two yards, three yards, but then you're going to break one because the guy's going to miss a tackle. And that's just what's going to happen. It was great. I thought it was outstanding how he played today. It was good, good, real good to see. Adam K sixty three. How big was it not having a threat like Briley Moore available? Uh, tremendous. Yeah, not having him out there. I mean, you could see it. You 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 could tell that he wasn't out there. You know, this doesn't mean anything or bad mouthing anybody else, but you could absolutely tell that he was not on that football field. You know, and it, it was it was a little painful to watch from time to time with passing in the passing game, but you could tell he wasn't there. Okay, so. Um... KSU man wants to know this, and I don't even know where to go with this, to be honest. Uh, this receiving core, they, out, of, out of their top five guys going into the season, two are out. Malik Knowles um, is injured again, so they're down to two. Phillip Brooks was the best receiver. Even Keenan Garber came in and made a, an appearance, and they're going to have to lean on him, even though he doesn't know the offense as well as they would like. Where does the receiver room go from here? This is an utter disaster. It's a disaster. To, I have no idea. I have no idea. It, it, I mean, it's got to get better. And I don't know how it's going to, but my goodness, this is, this is not good. This is, this, this is not good. I mean, guys drop passes, not open. I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I, I thought I would have some answers, but I, I don't have any answers. It's, I, I don't know where we're going to go. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Um, Contra Cat wants to know this. How big of a whiff was this? How big of an opportunity to get a win against a depleted Oklahoma State team did K-State just squander? I mean, it was. I mean, it, it was It was an opportunity that we, we should have had. Uh, I'll, I'll say that. It was an opportunity for us to get a win in a game that maybe we shouldn't have won. Um, but at the same time, Oklahoma State's really good. You know, and they have some depth, you know, because they're back up running back. I know Chuba Hutter, Hubbard is really good. I don't know that they missed a beat. You know, yeah. he came in and, you know, I just, they're, they're really, really talented. And that defense is lights out. That defense is lights out. Having said that, uh, K-State, we were right there. So, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a huge opportunity lost, but, I mean, they're a really good football team. They're they're a really good football team. So you got to tip your hat to them. And they came and, and got the win. They took the win. I don't know if we necessarily gave it to them per se. I know we had some turnovers and things that cost us the game, but they also they forced the turnovers. It wasn't just you know they forced those things to happen. So it's disappointing, but uh, and it's, and it is a big opportunity that's missed and lost, but. Um, I, I, I don't want us to beat up ourselves about it too bad because Oklahoma State's really good. Yeah, they are. They are. And, you know, Mike Gundy's an experienced coach. He's he's kind of gone from uh, kind of questionable sometimes to being the wise old man of the conference in many ways. It's kind of funny to see that. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, everyone loves the backup quarterback. It's just the way that the business works. Um you always find fault in your starter. But do you think people now have a greater appreciation for Skylar Thompson than they did before he was injured? Uh, I mean, they might. I don't know. But, I mean, that's – that's. I don't know. 
Hey, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure people probably do because he's going to get you into the right play and make the right play. Um, but let's call it what it is. I mean, Skyler wasn't the greatest quarterback. I mean, he wasn't doing all the things that we wanted to see him. I mean, people, we were all disappointed in his play from time to time. Now, he, he did a lot of good things, did a lot of great things. Let's not say good. He did a lot of great things. But I don't. I don't think that we should. I don't think we should be that way on, on these guys. These are kids. Let, let's not be that way about it. Lazy Jedi, great name. That's the first one I've. Uh, first question I've seen from him. Um, he flat out asks this. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Is Courtney Messingham a Power Five offensive coordinator? I, I don't know. But given that, let's see if he gets more weapons. Let's see. Yeah. Um, you know, get some more talent in there. Let's see. Because as much as I'm wanting to bash on them today, they know their guys better than I do. They know what they're capable of way better than I do. They may know, hey, it's not going to work. We can't do this. We can't do this based on this, this, and this. You know, because guys aren't stupid. Guys are getting paid money. This is their job. So, and as much as we want to be disappointed, I'm still going to be disappointed. Don't get me wrong, because I'm a fan. But at the same time, they're not going to continuously do something if they know it's not going to work, you know, just because they try something else when they know for a fact things can't work. So maybe they're just hoping that this will pop and this will pop because these are the things that they happen to do well. So um, I, I, I don't think I don't really think we know yet that it would be the, the thing to say. I don't think we know yet. I don't think that he's done a horrible job based on what we have. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. We get some, some more talent. We'll see. I guess my question would be this. Uh, I hope they hit the reset button in this off week and kind of look for new things on offense to do because uh, they found some things that worked early in the season and now they're stuck on them and, and everyone's yeah. seen it. Everyone scouted it and they're taking yep. away deuce. They're taking away the wheel route. They're taking away things that K state had great success with. Well, where's the next thing? You, you got to have Correct. something else to go to, and I'm not seeing that. So I hope when they travel to Iowa State in t- two two Saturdays from now, we see some of that. We see some tweaks and changes, maybe to accentuate the the talent they have. Um, you know, I mentioned Keenan Garber; he's one of the faster guys on the town and on the team. They tried to jet sweep with him, but uh, it kind of got bottled up a little bit. Do some things, design some things here. You know, put some things in specifically for some guys. Try something because this offense is not fun to watch on a consistent basis. Yeah, it's, it's a little stuck in the mud right now, Tim. It's a little stuck in the mud. Um, it's not. It's not fun to watch while we're playing like this. Having said that, we're also playing against some really good defenses the last couple of weeks. So, um, and even in the first half against KU, though, and coming back and doing for full circle, didn't really do much then either. So. We got to put some stuff together. We got to we got to figure some stuff out. You're right. We got to put some things in, put some new wrinkles in, do some new some new stuff and just come out with a whole new game plan because if you're breaking the season up, well this is another part of the season, the end part of the season where we can build some new things in, put some some new plays in, something fresh and new that's going to you know, get, not just get people excited, but that are people haven't seen that's going to work that we can put out there and have some success because we got to start having success. Because as an old offensive lineman, I'll tell you the, the worst thing is being able is running the ball and not being able to run the ball. That's the worst thing in the world for an offensive lineman to constantly run the football and not be able to get any yards. So we got to set them up to do some of the things that they do well. Now. Maybe they're limited. Maybe they're not. We'll see. But we got to be able to put them in better positions to where we can make some plays for them. Well, I'd agree with that. I, uh, I'm going to give you my hot take here. Um, K State is at four and two in the Big Twelve. They got three games to play coming into the season. Brian, I thought they were going to win five Big Twelve games. Um, so I kind of feel like, for me personally, this is my opinion. The only thing that will disappoint me about this season at this point is if they lose out. If they lose these next three games, then I'll, I'll be down about the season. But if they can pick up one more win, and certainly two more wins, uh, I'm going to feel okay and pretty good. And if they run the table, I'm going to feel incredible about this team. So um, I just don't see them losing all three of these games. Your thoughts? I don't think – I think <sighs> – 
I'm not going to be disappointed either way. Uh, I'm just looking at the talent, the total talent for where we're at. Uh, I'll be disappointed if we lose all three games. I, I shouldn't say that. If we lose all three games, I'll be disappointed. If we lose out, yeah, I'll be very disappointed. Having said that, if we can win one or two of these uh, and win all three, I'll be exasperated. Or not exasperated. I'll just be elated because I, I don't know – how good the talent level is at Kansas state right now. And for us to be able to win and play and compete at this level in this conference with the talent that's in this conference and still be able to win games, it's a hats off to the coaching staff. So um, if we can win six, I'll be, I mean, I think it's a good start. I think it's a good thing. If we can win six, that's what I want. I'm shooting for you. Come off and you got, we're already at four. We got to get to six, Tim. We got to get to six. Yep. Got to do it. That would be an, a very significant step in the program, uh, particularly considering how what a doink they had to open the season. I mean, they just absolutely right. looked horrible. And if they can get out of this season with five wins and certainly six wins, I will be very happy. If they run the table, I will be uh, watching K State in the Big Twelve Championship. Uh, it's it's odd after back to back losses to still have that on the table, but hey, it's 2020, Brian. It's 2020. That's right. It, everything cool. everything's weird this year. Um, <laughs> well, I I'm going to let you go because I my friend I don't know what else to say about it. It was just a very frustrating day. A game K State could have, should have, and didn't win, um, and uh, they left it on the table. They will learn from this. They will learn from this. And Will Howard, I think, will be a better quarterback because of this. May not be this season, but he's going to grow into the job. Thank you, sir. Any final thoughts from you? No, I just I don't think that K State fans should hold their heads. You know, this was a tough football game. You know, against a team that's really good. I know that we're not necessarily used to saying how good Oklahoma State is because they've had a couple of years where they were superior. But for the most part, K-State, I mean, Oklahoma State is not one of the top teams in the country. Oklahoma State's one of the top teams in the country, especially on defense. And when their guys are churning on offense, they're really, really good. So this was not a bad loss. Last week was horrible. This week, not horrible. Felt like we were, not felt like we were. We were right there. So a play here or there goes our way. Who knows? We may win. So don't hold your head. Just keep, we'll keep fighting. The guys will keep getting better. The coaches will keep getting better. Uh, we'll come out not next week, the following week against Iowa State. and We'll get after it and see where the chips lie. His name's Brian Hanley, offensive lineman at K-State, 97 and 98, and he is our analyst at GoPowerCat.com. This has been the PowerCat Postgame Podcast, sponsored by Caddy Shack Golf. Make sure you head over to Caddy Shack Golf. That's Caddy with two Ts. Brian, thank you, and we will talk to everyone next week with more podcasts from the crew at GoPowerCat.com. And as we wrap up this edition of the PowerCat postgame podcast, let's go back to the interview room and hear from Kansas State Senior Center Noah Johnson on his belief in true freshman quarterback Will Howard. Man, he's a, he's a hell of a competitor, so he's going to take a loss like that, you know, hard. Everyone on our team took that loss hard, but – that dude played his, his butt off today. He he battled. He put us on his back, really. As a, as a true freshman, he was making plays all over the field. You know, you can look at whatever you want. People can say whatever they want. But that dude battled. And I'll go, I'll go to battle with him any day of the week. And I, uh, I know he's going to be stung by this loss. He's frustrated as hell. But like I said, he's going to flip the page tomorrow. And we're going to show up to work. And we're going to get better. PowerCat Podcast, all rights reserved, gopowercat.com and Spirit Street Publishing. Who is June Carter Cash? You don't know music until you know June. Experience the artist and icon story of talent, ambition, and loyalty. She had this bar, the it. June, new documentary now streaming exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. Go to Paramount Plus to try it free. Terms apply.